Hey friends, it's me, Mila Mars, and it's time for another Aspis Mystery episode. Today's viewer question comes from Alexander in Los Angeles. He asked, why can birds fly but humans can't? And how do we learn how to soar for the sky? Let's see if our favorite hero can get to the bottom of this mystery. Wow, what a great question, Alexander. I mean, this is probably something that confused people all throughout history. I mean, imagine back in ancient times. You're a caveman wandering around in the world and you see this little creature with wings. Wouldn't you just be like, that is so awesome. I bet some of those cavemen even had visions of soaring through the sky like a bird. Being a caveman and not understanding the laws of modern physics, maybe some of them even climbed up on a tall rock and gave it a go. <laughs> it definitely would have been a letdown, but let's hope he passed on the lesson to his caveman friends before anyone got too badly hurt. Yes, these fellas would have to wait approximately 299,000 more years before humans would learn to harness the power of flight. In the millennia that followed cavemen, humans continued to be fascinated with flight. Something about the idea of being able to just take off and soar into the clouds above everybody else is magical, right? So why can birds fly and we can't? Well, there are three main reasons. First, their wings are specially shaped to push air down while lifting them up. Second, their bones are hollow, which makes them super light. And third, they've got powerful chest muscles perfectly built for flapping. By contrast, humans' arms are too short and weak to push enough air to lift us up Ooh. off the ground. But also, we're just too heavy because our bones are solid, not hollow, and our muscles aren't made for flapping. Now, back in 1500 CE, a guy you may have heard of, Leonardo da Vinci, he started to figure all of this out. Da Vinci drew intricate designs for like real deal wings, gliders, and even a spinning helicopter thing all in the 1400s. He came up with these ideas because Leonardo wasn't just an artist. He was working for the military too, designing wild inventions like tanks and giant crossbows. While doing that, he started thinking, what if humans could fly like birds? Boy, oh boy that would help with the military, right? So he watched birds, studied how air moved, and filled entire notebooks with these epic flying machine ideas. One of those notebooks is called the Codex on the Flight of Birds. It's basically the first flight engineering book ever. He figured out stuff like lift, drag, and air resistance all before Shakespeare was even born. Sure, none of his machines actually flew, but Leonardo, was the first person to seriously ask, how could we really make this happen? After Da Vinci's sketches, the dream of flight didn't die. It floated, literally. In 1783, the Montgolfier brothers launched the first hot air balloon in France. It was giant, round, and powered by fire. No steering, but people went up for the first time ever. Then in the 1800s, inventors like George Cayley and Otto Lilienthal started building gliders. Basically, giant wings you could ride. Cayley figured out how lift works. Woohoo! And Lilienthal actually flew over 2,000 glider flights off hills. 
just using gravity and guts. These guys weren't guessing. They were collecting real flight data, slowly figuring out the rules of the sky. Now, enter the Wright brothers, two bicycle mechanics from Ohio, who studied everything those early pioneers learned and took it next level. They built a wind tunnel to test wing shapes. Hooray! And on December 17th, 1903, they launched the first powered controlled flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Orville flew 120 feet in 12 seconds. And just like that, humans finally cracked the sky. Just 30 years after that first flight, people were flying in legit planes. Airplanes weren't just for daredevils and test pilots anymore. They were for passengers. That's when we got the first commercial airplanes. The ones that looked like shiny silver birds and had actual seats. These early airliners flew around 150 to 200 miles per hour versus the 500 to 600 miles per hour modern planes fly. But it was still mind blowing back then. The planes had real pilots in uniforms, little windows, and sometimes even in-flight meals. It was still a little bumpy and only rich folks could afford it, but it was the first time flight felt normal. Once planes went commercial in the 1930s, it was like the floodgates opened. Engineers kept tweaking, improving, making planes faster, safer, stronger. We got jet engines, then supersonic flight, going faster than the speed of sound. Broke Mach 1 in a rocket plane. Supersonic? More like super fun. <laughs> and then we left the planet. In 1969, just 66 years after the Wright brothers' baby flight, humans were walking on the moon, full on space travel, all in less than a century. And that, my friends, is the history of human flight. Alexander, I hope that answered your question. And if you have a question for Miss Mystery, send it to this email address. Until next time. Bye, friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe.